Okay, let's start. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our fourth meeting of this new Rotary year. Before we start, let's hear the housekeeping rules. Over to you, Dr. Klaus. Uh, good evening, fellow Rotarians. Good evening, good evening. Past President. Good evening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as as uh, every week, I have to announce the housekeeping rules. And uh, please make sure that you are registered under your full name and your video is switched on all the time so we can see that you are not doing something else or falling asleep. <laughs> um, the session will be recorded and uh, by keeping, uh, by being online, you agree that um, the video can be used for a club promotion or the social media. All the participants are muted during the presentation and talks, and you can uh, use the chat function. Oh, oh, shit. You're muted. We, we can't hear you now. Klaus, you're um, muted. Klaus, you're muted. Muted. Oh, sorry. Sorry, oh, you have to say again. So, so uh, all participants will be muted throughout the meeting <laughs> and talks. And uh, you can unmute yourself by pressing the space button. And you can also use the shut function in the Zoom meeting. And at the end, you can also um, ask a question and um, give some comments. And uh, if you want to ask something uh, during the presentation, you raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you, Sajid and Arms, Dr. Klaus, for giving us the opening. And now uh, I would like to share screens. <laughs> you. Welcome to the fourth Rotary meeting of this year, 2021-2022. We welcome all our honored guests, Rotarians, honorary members, and everyone who is passionate about Rotary. Welcome to our meeting. I would like to now invite our Toastmaster, Rotarian Joseph Chia, please. Joseph, are you in? Uh, yeah, I'm in, but I'm not Toastmaster. There should be PP with key, Mr. Toastmaster. Oh, right? I see. Okay, apologies. Oh, I, I'm in. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> I understand there's no. Uh, thank you, uh, President Lewis. I understand there's no. Uh, visitor today. We were expecting somebody from Hanover, but uh, I have not seen him on the screen yet. So we will be raising a toast to Rotary International. Ladies and gentlemen, to the great club of ours, Rotary International. Rotary International. To Rotary International. Rotary International. Rotary International. Rotary International. Uh, perhaps uh, we can just check our own Zoom again to make sure that we are muted. And now, I would just like to announce uh, some birthdays. So, birthday celebrants today will be Barunt and John Gores, both today. Happy birthday, boys, 28th of July. And then on the 30th will be Miha, followed by honorary member, past president Raymond Huang for the 31st of July. And then President-elect James Lee, also 31st, and Ronald Sujan, 31st July. We wish them the best of health and happiness.
and then we have uh, anniversary Arti Wada and Nils Nielsen on the 30th of July. Congratulations and happy anniversary. You do want to read? Now I have a very important news and you can see our handsome Dr. Yap putting on his jacket. <laughs> I would like to ask everyone to join me in first thanking Dr. Yap for putting himself forward to actually become the nominee for district governor for the Rotary year 2024 and 2025. Thank you, Dr. Yap. Congratulations. This is, a, this is a big task and you know we are all behind you Dr. Yap. We wish you all the best. The club is behind you. Let me just stop sharing for a while because I would like to share something about uh, Dr. Yap's CV. A moment, please. Yippee, Nikki, you look different with glasses on. Haven't seen you with glasses for a <laughs> long, long time. <laughs> Can't hear you. You're muted. Just trying to find uh, the email from Bernie. All right. Um, Bernie, do you have the slides with you, the CV? I've resent it again, President. Okay, because I couldn't find yeah. it. Yeah, I've, I've just resent it. You, you should have it. Okay, but uh, there was there's no attachment. Okay, I found it. Thank you very much. Can we have the mute on for everyone again, please? Here's a little bit about our Dr. Yap, who, who has done so much for our club all these years. His generosity, his participation, his jolly walking, you know, his photography, his calendars. You know, he has never stopped doing work for the Rotary Club. Dr. Yap Lee Kee, joined the club 22 years ago. By profession, he's a gynecology in his own firm, Gyne Consultancy Private Limited. He has held many positions apart from being just the past president of our club. He has also been active in the district. Currently, he is the District International Service Committee Chair. He is also the co-chair for the Rotary International Convention Host Committee in his position, he has been in the District Chairman Disaster Management Committee from 2016 to 2019. He was a member of the District Disaster Relief Committee 
2010 to 2011. He was the assistant governor of District 3310 2013 and 2014. He was the reporting officer for District 3310 2014 and 2015. He was the chairman of scholarship subcommittee District Rotary Foundation Committee. He was the inter-district relations representative for Africa 2016 to 2018. He's the co-chair of the Convention Bid Committee 2017. And here I pause to say that this bid was successful. And therefore, in 2024, sometime in April, we will have the RI Convention right here in Singapore. So with this, don't we all think that Dr. Yap should become the DG? Well, we must go behind Dr. Yap supporting him in this endeavor. He has held many positions and he was board of directors for so many years in so many committees. He was also the chairman fundraising committee for 2014 to 2017. And in addition, he was awarded the excellence in vocational service in 2014 and 2015. So with these credentials, I ask all members to support Dr. Yap in his bid to become the nominee for district governor 2024-2025. Thank you, Dr. Yap. Can you please, uh, would you like to say a few words, please? Thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, it will be a great pleasure to serve. I have tried, uh, well, been put up several times and uh, unfortunately not been successful. So I hope this year all goes well. Um, I was asked to do a bit of kaifa. So if you, uh, you do not mind, I will very quickly yeah. share so, the. Uh, so before you do that, uh, Dr. Yap, yeah. I, I want to give a quiz to them. Right. Okay, every week, kaifa was started by IPP Dinesh, but today you can see that it is not kaifa, but it's KYCP. So uh. this is a quiz. Who knows what is KYCP? The, we, the first one to give the answer will have lunch with District Governor Dr. Yap Lip Ki. Uh, well, President, uh, can you repeat that? Know your... KYCP, uh, know your CP. What, the, what is CP? Know your customer profile, usually it is. <laughs> 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 anyway, I we all look <laughs> forward to KY uh, profile. KYRP. <laughs> okay, so to just you know uh, satisfy your curiosity, Dr. Yap, please. Know your candidate of choice. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, sorry, I think I fumbled here. So this is, uh, I, my apologies, this is, uh, Kai, well, this was Kaifa I presented back May, not too far, not too long ago. So I will very quickly go through that and uh, more to show you the pictures that uh, this is where I was born in Kuala Lumpur and uh, the new town is much dirtier. My old school, uh, we used to cycle to school past the Pudu jail and this is a jail then and now. Uh, Kuala Lumpur has not changed very much since I last left. 1970 there was a flood and I gather last year there was another flood. Uh, you know Singapore, my adopted home where uh, you can see pictures around the time when I arrived. I also left Singapore after I graduated to work in Aberdeen as a lecturer. And uh, this is Aberdeen. Now, if you go back, you will see the same pictures. Aberdeen has not changed. And during that time, I took the chance to go to Europe, USA and uh, learn. And when I came back, I was uh, working in Singapore and because I collaborated with a surgeon called Mohan Chalapa and uh, we were the first team that did laparoscopic cholecystectomy in Asia back in uh, 1992, uh, 19, 
90, I would think. And uh, from there, we did a lot of laparoscopic surgery in uh, and around the Asia area in, uh, in Asia, India, Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, my family, very quickly, had three kids then and uh, more recently now. And my wife, Rachel, We have had quite a lot of interesting projects in uh, in the Rotary Club of Singapore. Here is the trip to Nepal. Uh, we see that it was just in Bandipur where we had fun pretending to be patients and seeing the real patients. And uh, after seeing the patients, we were involved in uh, this was uh, holy. Yeah, we. The year after my, I was president, the Pakistan floods came and uh, the major project money was went to Red Cross and I went to uh, Pakistan to see the money being delivered uh, to, to give them food. Now I'm calling Miles. Uh, big, the collection. At that time, SMS donation was uh, just started and we, because of Colin, we managed to uh, put it through to the press and uh, we collected about $640,000, which we sent to Japan uh, through the Red Cross. And one of the projects that we went to see uh, the year after, I think the trip led by Stan Lo, where we saw the drums that we paid, uh, purchased for the community. Later on, there's another disaster. This was in uh, Nepal where they had an earthquake. And uh, you can see that Jimmy was the leader of the trip that went to survey. And uh, we saw some of the uh, devastation. And this was a hospital we visited. And uh, we met the president-elect of that year. and. Uh, managed to carry on with projects. Back, uh, other than just service projects, we did have uh, social projects, as in this case where we visited Japan. We, was Kawaiian was a mix of both social and uh, service. And here is also social and service in China. And Lombok, where we had the uh, water projects. I did work in uh, Papua many years ago as part of my uh, professional work, but by the way, took time off to meet the, the Rotarians in uh, Papua, in Jayapura. So here's another one, the project to uh, Tumu Tumu in uh, Kenya, a project we hope to carry on as a vocational service project. Um, no, no. Here is a surgery and uh, here the Rotary International Convention that you know of. We have actually quite a lot of things and uh, one of the things I spoke to uh, President Lewis is that we should actually re redo what we did many years ago the book, 60 years of uh, Rotary in the, of the old club. Oh, what happened? Sorry. And I was doing some research as to how we can improve on this particular version. And we saw, I came across this book by uh, Roland Bradle. And he wrote a nice little book about life in 1930s, in the 1930s in Singapore. And I thought that's a good thing to add on to this book and illustrate it. And well, it happens that he happened, he's our pres charter president, Roland Bradle of the Rotary Club of Singapore. And uh, so we have some of the pictures here. This is the blue room, I think. None of us around 
have had the opportunity to see the blue room where the Rotary meeting was, that is in capital, but uh, we've heard of it. And uh, pictures are available, uh, seem to be. Here's uh, another view of Singapore in the 1930s. And the view below is uh, the same scene in this year, like here. This is where the scene was taken. Another, this is 1950s. And uh, this is 2021. And uh, you can see the big difference. But this is back in 1950s and present. So we were, were thinking that so we could actually do a whole series of illustrated uh, pictures of happens and uh, from the year 20, you know, eight, 1932, 2030. And uh, this is just, some of you may remember Lao Pasa in the many years, 1950, and the present Lao Pasa. The Padang in 1950s. So the whole thing, we can go on with a series and uh, many of our members have been involved in all this construction and uh, we have donated a lot of to some projects here and uh, you can see that uh, this is uh, if those who recognize here is uh, as Singapore General Hospital of oh, time okay at the back is a uh, mystery wing which our member Donated. I will just very quickly go through this, and uh, this is Turf Club where much of the money came. So essentially, this is what I asked uh, President Lewis for permission to discuss. Um, that's uh, the future project of the book "100 Years of uh, Rotary Club of Singapore" or "100 Years of Rotary in Singapore." Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Yap. So, have you all got the clue what is KYCP already? So oh, you're a chief <laughs> photographer. So <laughs> oh, you're a charter president. <laughs> yeah. So Mukun, you get a dinner with our future district governor. <laughs> so, Sir Roland Bradle, know your charter president. Fantastic. Okay. And now we would like to move on to the next segment. We have a very interesting and important person coming to speak to us. So first of all, I would like to invite director for CSC, Peter Brock, to uh, give some uh, <coughs> tips about what our guest speaker is going to talk about. Peter, over to you. Thank you, pr President. It's my great honour to introduce our guest. Um, our, our guest tonight is Dr. Wong Sweet Fun. She's a senior consultant act, who acti actively promotes aging in place within people who live to a older age. Her current work extends beyond the walls of the hospitals to improve the health of the population living within the Yishan Health and the National Healthcare Group catchment. Dr. Wong is, is also a founder of Share a Pot. Share a Pot is a program that was first rolled out in January 2015. Most of us will know a little bit about Share the Pot since we have had some talks with, with our, our club about this as well and then what we want to do. But Dr. Wong will provide us with a lot more in information on this and and how it's how, how it has developed from a community-based volunteer-led pro program that 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 weaves science into tradition i'm extremely proud to give this quick up update that I've, i'll allow dr wong to now update the rest of us on her on her career and also share a part. So please join with me in wel welcoming Dr. Wong to 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. President, across to you again. Thank you, Peter, for the introduction to Dr. Wang. Dr. Wang, thank you for coming. And please uh, let us know more about your important project. Thank you, Peter. Uh, thank you, Louise, uh, for inviting me to this um, uh, presentation. Today, I would like to share with you our program called Share Report. Um, this is a very familiar scene to many of us. Uh, I know it shows many, uh, uh, mainly Chinese family pictures. So this is what I grew up with, eating together with my family, big uh, gatherings. Uh, and there's a lot of laughter, a lot of, uh, and we, we eat well. Yeah, and this is a typical scene in a Singapore family. Yeah, these are also scenes from Singapore. Uh, there are other people as well. They are not as uh, fortunate as we are. Um, Mr. Sun here, he lives alone ever since his uh, mother died. And um, he receives two meals a day from uh, um, Willing Hearts. Um, and uh, he essentially spends most of his time on his own. So other than the two meals that he gets, um, he doesn't have anything else to motivate him to eat well or to move around more in his community. Um, so in Singapore, we have progressed very, very fast and we've gone very, very far. You can see uh, in the background, the progress that we have made. But in the foreground, you will see that uh, some people are left behind. And um, a lot of them are the seniors. Uh, they wonder when they look out uh, in the in the background, this banking new buildings, uh, new progress, uh, technology. The children move out to work and they spend the rest of the day by themselves. Um, not all of them get uh, two good meals a day. So there is a increasing uh, frailty syndrome that is arising even in urban Singapore in, um, in a very... Um, affluent country like Singapore. And um, how does that work? Um, as we all age, right, we will face some physical and mental decline. And uh, many people will withdraw, avoid seeking help to maintain their dignity, and that puts them into social isolation. And when they are isolated, they will lose the motivation to be active and to eat well. And that uh, brings them further down into physical and mental decline. And so this is the vicious uh, spiral of frailty. Um, can we do anything about it? And um, the good news is, yes, we can. And uh, that's the reason why I'm still very optimistic about our future. Um, how, how, do we, how do we want to do this? So... Um, we started off with a very simple concept of um, health and fitness, as simple as my mother's soup. So when I was young, I come from a Cantonese family. My mother uh, 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 boils uh, soup right, from bones, mainly pork bones uh, or chicken bones. And uh, we didn't know it, it was delicious, but we didn't know it was really very nutritious. But what happened is that if we boil a uh, bone, to a rolling boil um, for hours, we actually extract a lot of protein into the soup. Uh, and if we acidify the soup to a certain extent, either we uh, using natural um, ingredients like tomatoes or by adding a bit of vinegar to the soup, right? We actually pull out the calcium from their bones into the soup as well. So what we get is really a soup that is high in protein and calcium. That is actually now uh, scientifically proven. Yeah. So my mother was really very wise. Uh, the second scientific fact that we have learned is that within two hours of uh, any uh, exercise, if you take a high protein meal, the protein will go into making muscle. That is another scientific fact. So either you have a high protein meal first or you exercise first, as long as it is within two hours of each other, 
uh, almost all that protein goes into making muscles. But it isn't the protein in the soup that makes strong muscles. It just makes muscles. What makes it strong is the exercise. Yeah, and we know that any um, 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 weight-bearing exercise as well will prevent osteoporosis. It builds bones or it prevents uh, bone erosions. So when we combine the two together, a uh, high-protein meal, as can be found in the bone broth and exercise, we can actually build uh, strength in older people. Uh, when we started this program, we didn't have much uh, resources, so we said, um, we can't exactly bring the bone broth or the exercise to people. So we said, let's ask them to come down. And when they came down and started to exercise together and uh, eat together, right, um, they couldn't very well do it uh, without talking to each other. And so they had also social engagement. And that meant that we could build brain because we know brain is one power. If you don't use it, you will lose it. Yeah, so building brain and in addition, one final side effect, actually we didn't expect this, was that when people started to talk together, all right, eat and exercise together, they started to care for each other. So the last piece of uh, building was in building community, right, building bonds. And so uh, uh, event um, activities became much more meaningful when they came together. And we knew that something uh, like this needed to be simple so that they could just plug and play uh, to, to, to get this going. So we designed the, the program to be an inclusive design. Um, we said that, you know, um, if we started to tell people, you, can't, you can come to this program if you are frail, essentially we are telling them, um, okay, you fail the test so you can come. People don't like to come to a program where they are first labeled as a failure. So we did not focus on frailty. We focused on what was strong with them. So positive framing really excites people into action. Uh, we didn't want this to be a charity program where people feel pity, instead of feeling energy. So this was meant to be a project that emphasized dignity, not charity. People who come were not needy people. They weren't coming to be served. They were coming to participate. And so they would wash their own bowls. They would clean up after themselves and they would help each other. And uh, we also know that actually uh, individually, we, are, um, we can do a lot. But, you know, together, we can do a lot more. So um, the program is really very easy. Uh, it's a low barrier for entry, very easy and very fun. Essentially, a partner site is uh, trained with a starter kit, uh, including the recipes, the toolkits, as well as any uh, equipment that they may need. Uh, then we would recruit participants uh, who would get a step tracker, a good workout, and a hearty soup at the end of it. And every week after that, they would join their new friends for exercise and soup. Uh, to know if they were growing stronger, we actually uh, conduct basic functional assessments, uh, which include their grip strength, their functional reach, and a short physical perform performance battery that included uh, the measurement of their balance, their strength, and their walking speed uh, every six months. So that would be one way they could see for themselves that they were actually getting stronger um, when they came down. That's what it's like.
general thought is about getting resilient out of their homes into an area where they can interact socially, exercise, and, and share a part of the pursuit. They get mind social, they get to cross barriers, they get to first of all learn about each other and love each other. The broth is made of delicious soup, good ingredients, and then the exercise part is very, very important. That's the only thing that keeps people active. So we have a mixed group of people, the average age is about 70 and they come here and you can see the happiness after a while in their eyes, in their faces when they find friends here, they find new meaning we have cases where people stay home for a long time pressure practically and then they come here and they're transformed so I think SharePoint is a simple idea but it has evolved into something very beneficial what we're trying to do is try to replicate this formula, this winning formula, as many times as we can. Yeah, and lives have been changed by uh, the program. Let me introduce you to Uncle Francis. This is Uncle Francis. He was 91 years old when I first met him at one of our first share of pot uh, setups. Um, he came in a wheelchair actually and uh, I looked rather doubtfully at him. I'm very ashamed to say that. Uh, and I, I asked him, you know, uh, Uncle, if you come to this program, you will need to stand up uh, and exercise and be measured. And he looked up and he said to me, okay. And he stood up. He, you know, uh, did whatever um, the exercises uh, needed him to. Uh, and then he um, walked home for the first time. Uh, the next day, uh, the next week, he came back in his wheelchair while he walked home. And he did that for a few months. And after seven to eight months, he told his daughter, um, I think it's okay. If you get me a stick, I can walk now. So he started to walk to and fro. And this is AJ, who is the, the exercise trainer, who really is one of the uh, energy bunnies of the program. He called out Uncle Francis and said, can you teach them how to do some exercises? And he really game fully came up and started to do the exercises that he said he used to learn when he was in the military. I don't know what military, at 91 years old, he must have fought quite a lot for Singapore. And when we did an exercise video, he came fully, again, came along to be um, filmed. And he said, this would inspire a lot of people to do exercises because if I can, they can as well. So he didn't just, you know, get up, do exercises and got better. He went around to be our roadshow champion. And I remember on, um, um, on a conference, I was asked to present a uh, share report and I invited him to share alongside me. He amazed the, 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 the crowd because he just jumped out of his chair and spoke with such a strong voice that they really couldn't see that this was a 90 something year old uh, gentleman. Yeah. He's still around. Yeah. Um, and uh, other people that I'd like to share about um, Uncle Chen, he basically, uh, when, the, when the volunteers go, whatever he has left, he will just give them freely because uh, he knows that this goes to feeding older people or um, uh, vulnerable people. Um, people come forward, um, they say that they don't know anything, you know, like Auntie Sharon, she says, I only know how to cook because I've only looked after my family all these years of my life. And uh, that's exactly the gift uh, that is so valuable to us. So at this wellness kampong, the uncle who used to be a farmer started to grow vegetables to give to her to cook the soup. And, and that was like quite a, quite a good uh, uh, synergy between all the community um, participants. So we have grown. Uh, since 2015, when we first started, now we have 32 sites island-wide. We still have 12 sites uh, waiting to uh, get started. Um, these 32 sites currently run up to 34 weekly, se weekly sessions uh, for 1,800 participants. Mostly they are seniors 
and uh, there are about 220 registered volunteers doing this work right now. Um, and there are also intergenerational effects because some of these sites are actually schools um, and uh, it's very heartening to see uh, young children interacting and putting their, their creative ideas to how to get uh, older people on their feet and they, a lot of them have ended up teaching the older people how to be tech savvy as well. Um, and then, well, uh, 23rd January 2020, the first COVID patient in Singapore. And so uh, we were disrupted, okay? And uh, we had to stop our activities uh, during the circuit breaker. And increasingly, we did see that uh, people missed the activity. So a participant said that her kids wanted her to be safe. So they said, don't go out, stay home as much as possible. And others uh, noticed that their neighbors were not as strong as before. And some of the uh, volunteers uh, called their, their participants and many of them cried because they felt very, very lonely indeed. But um, there was an indomitable spirit that lived on in many of the sites. So um, exercise sessions went online. Um, Agape Village, um, this is Our Lady Star of the Sea a Church. This is Sri Narayana Mission Home. Uh, and this is Wellness Kampong. They just continued. No soup, but they continued, which was a good sign. Um, and they started something new now. Hello 无论是怎样的限制然后鼓励他们用视频在这个有限的活动上的限制上也会快乐。到时候政府放宽了很多的时候，我们又可以聚在一起，你懂吗？我觉得那个聚在一起呢，是最开心的事情。And the, um, I think the 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 residents, they love it. They 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 really excited to restart. You know, uh, it may not be in big groups, but uh, the care is still there. Uh, and we are hopeful that their bones and their muscles will remain strong. Um, so if the mountain cannot come to Muhammad, we definitely are going to the mountain.
um, and uh, very uh, heartening this uh, on 28 June, share a pot at uh, Agabai village, celebrated their fifth anniversary online. Uh, nothing stops them. So this is really very heartening instead, indeed. And uh, I think what we want to do is now to uh, make it such that uh, we can get to them. So the, the question that we faced was how can we reduce the impact of COVID-19 on the physical, mental and social frailty of vulnerable people and ensure the continuity of contact and care throughout pandemic situations. This is what we need to do right now to make our share report pandemic proof. Yeah, And um, we've uh, worked out what we need. We need a digital registration system because now we can't be there physically uh, to register them. Uh, when we have our exercises online, we also do a digital res registration. And on this registration, we also are going to do their measurements. Uh, bringing the soup to them, uh, we've started with the thermal flask. And uh, we've, we're also doing um, what we would call an eco-friendly uh, tapao, um, uh, tapao alternative. In case we run out of uh, thermal pots, then out comes the furushiki to wrap whatever container that we can put uh, the soup in. Um, then home-based activities, we are bringing the um, exercise uh, kits as well as the exercise booklets to them. Yeah, um, We still train the volunteers. There are, there's a lot more to the training now. We will need to teach them online facilitation skills and digital and other required skills in addition to uh, food hygiene, uh, food handling, as well as uh, measuring the physical uh, status of the participants. But we, we really appreciate these volunteers. So once a year, we uh, still um, call them back to uh, appreciate their contributions. And we would like to also try, actually, this is something new, um, to uh, do pop-up uh, share a pot uh, in spaces where people are allowed to meet in small in, in small groups. Yeah, so these are what we think we, would take us to the new pandemic proof uh, situation where we can be agile, flexible and safe for the new normal. So we can uh, flex from fully home base, like what you saw in the video, okay, uh, to minimal center activity where they can use the center to uh, prepare soups. Uh, they can do hybrids, uh, as well as we can go back to fully centered base one day. Uh, we look forward to the day when we can get back together again. So we would just adjust our activities along this continuum with whatever safe distancing measures that are um, you know, effective for that period of the pandemic. Yeah. And uh, it's not to brag, but it is to say that um, we did want to know that uh, we, we did want to know if this program would stand up to the scrutiny of a global uh, um, community. And so in 2017, uh, we were awarded the Social Impact Prize by uh, IF. Um, and uh, it, was, it was very encouraging to us. And uh, in 2019, uh, we were also given another award um, for being a service uh, that connects uh, people, uh, partners, healthcare um, professionals with the community. So that's the end of my sharing. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you, Dr. Wong, for sharing with us this very important, nutritious journey that uh, the elderly would benefit from. And I would like to ask now that Dr. Chan, VP for this year, to say a big thank you to Dr. Wong, please. Yeah, thank you, President. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Rotarians, I first met Dr. Wong about a year ago, slightly more, maybe one and a half years ago, uh, pre-pandemic, um, at the Wellness Kampong uh, in Yishun, where uh, she was, work, uh, was also part of all her community outreach in Yishun Health. 
And uh, at that time, I was really very impressed with the kind of community uh, programs that uh, she's been running. Some of these were initiated uh, in her capacity as in, in the hospital, uh, but a lot of it has actually expanded beyond uh, what the hospital uh, mandates and it has spread into the community and it became like a, something that grew out organically. And I was present in the, in the wellness kampong and I can see the residents there coming in on their own. They have ownership of the place. There is no, um, there's, there's nobody in charge. But yet the place was very orderly. Everybody takes ownership of the place. They take care of the equipment and they're friendly to each other. And there's a real community bonding there that I can see. And we explored a bit of uh, back then how we can work uh, together on the project. And then the pandemic came and all the restrictions comes in and uh, we kind of like forgot about it after a while. Um, but soon, the, when we, in around the middle of, of Actually, it's beginning of this year, we started looking around again for a project. And um, so I connected with uh, Dr. Wong again. And uh, I found out more about this uh, Share Report program, which has been derailed because of the pandemic. And we wanted to do this uh, capacity building uh, project over the next few years. And this kind of fits very well into this, uh, the theme of uh, capacity building in the new normal, whereby we take uh, programs that are they are successful pre-pandemic and that has been derailed by the pandemic and we want to pandemic proof it and to, to, so that the beneficiaries continue to reap the benefits of the program whether there's a pandemic going on or not. So uh, it gives me great pleasure today to see uh, Dr. Wong again and uh, I'm sure members who attended the club assembly two, uh, two weeks ago I've also presented this as a potential major project uh, for, for the, uh, the current year. So we'll take this uh, on again uh, for further discussion in the coming weeks. Uh, today, just leave me to thank Dr. Wong once again uh, for sharing with us her very successful program. Thank you, Dr. Wong. You're welcome. Dr. Yeah. Wong, uh, please stay on for some questions. Uh, ah, we have one question right now from uh, the Rotarian Utam who asks whether there are options for vegetarians. Ah, yes. Thank you for the question. Yes. Uh, Indeed, um, a few people have requested for vegetarian options. So we are working with a partner. I think some of you may be familiar, Si uh, Chi. They actually have many uh, vegetarian uh, recipes and they are very happy to work with us uh, to put up a few vegetarian uh, recipes as well as some of the community uh, aunties have come forward with their recipes as well. So what we do with these recipes is that we will get our dietitians to look through them. And in fact, we do have a little bit of a kitchen uh, experiment uh, area in the hospital where we will actually cook the soup using the, the, the recipe that is provided and uh, testing it out first uh, for its components as well as uh, for its taste and its appearance as well. After that, once it's done, um, we will um, return the recipe to the, to the owner and make suggestions if there need to be any. If not, then it's good to go. And uh, then we will try that out in the community. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Wang. Uh, members, if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask Dr. Wang, who is here to share with us. Uh, if you wish to also uh, post your question on the chat, I will, I will, I will take a look at your question and uh, ask Dr. Wong. Lewis, I have a question if it's okay. Yes, go ahead, please, John. Yeah, Dr. Wong, a uh, bit of a personal question. A, a very nice story, uh, very compelling and heartwarming. Um, so thank you for your time and sharing. I'm, I'm curious for you personally, not for the program, yeah. what, what was the most challenging part for you before the pandemic? And then what's been the most challenging part for you personally in the last one year? Okay. Um, before the pandemic, um, on, uh, starting the program, the most challenging was uh, choosing the right model. And um, 
what was the core uh, concept that was the most important for which the fidelity needed to be maintained? Otherwise, once we spread it and scale it, right, uh, it could be a heterogeneous uh, program that neither uh, accomplished its goal or resembled the original. Yeah, so the core of the program is that it builds bones, it builds uh, muscles, it keeps people strong. Um, so that's physically and that getting it in a social environment uh, keeps them together strong socially and cognitively. For me as a geriatrician, that was very important because um, we have known worldwide that uh, many um, frailty prevention programs were plagued with many, many problems. And in Singapore, many frailty prevention programs uh, have failed to scale. Um, so this is a very core uh, issue where uh, it is related to very simple things. Uh, we leverage the, the way um, Asians, we eat together. It's important. Uh, we exercise together, you know, we do Tai Chi together. So this group activity, it was a simple thing for people to do. And then when we took these age old uh, recipes, it had this reminiscence back for them. So it was a bit of a reminiscence therapy for many of these people uh, who really yearn for the old days to come. So um, it was really uh, putting uh, it back into a core that was easy for people to actually digest, uh, uh, pun intended. So that was the core. And um, But if we said, you know, oh, it's about soup, then people will ask me, you know, uh, but you didn't give me a complete meal. So very clearly, this is not a meal replacement. It is about uh, enhancing the protein intake um, and the calcium intake of individuals when combined with exercise to give them strength. Um, so the core, together with this idea of we're not here to feed Singapore, we're not here to uh, feed the poor. It is not a charity project. It is about anyone who is frail. So there were people who asked us a lot of questions, um, like uh, if someone were to drive up with a Mercedes Benz and say, I would like to participate in chair report, would you allow? And the answer is yes, it's the dignity of that person. But I was also asked the person, after the person has come to be comfortable in this program, would you like to lend a hand? Would you like to contribute as well? And that adds on to the dignity of the person. So uh, there were a lot of these uh, concepts that we packed together. And that was the core we tried to preserve. So many people wanted to change it. Um, what about we change this into a health program? It's not about health. Yeah, but health is a byproduct of it. So that's that I think was my core challenge before the pandemic. Um, when the pandemic came, um, I think really uh, it was finding out how to uh, be even uh, more than pandemic proof. It had to be endemic proof now because we don't know when this is going to end, uh, whether social distancing is going to be forever. What about, I, I cannot stop the program if it's two to meet, five to meet, eight to meet. It must still go on. And uh, how do we group and regroup quickly? Uh, how do we go back to a center base where you can feel the, the energy of the group, you know, uh, and that we should call them down and really feel the energy because that is really uh, an um, enriching. So I think uh, keeping that energy going while coming up with our new solution was the bigger challenge. So the last one year was uh, the last one year getting this um, share report at home uh, was the I think the worst uh, time of, of my of my program. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Yes. May I ask? May I ask a question, please? Yes. Yes. Uh, Doctor Wong, uh, e excellent program. But I just noticed that most of the uh, participants tend to be Chinese. 
would this program cover uh, non-Chinese? Yes. That's one. The second is that uh, we in the Rotary Club would, li would like to help, but is there some, a bill of material? Uh, you know, is there something that, uh, that you're looking for that we can help other than being a volunteer to that Mercedes guy, for example? But, you know, if, if there's something hard numbers, like, you know, you need 200 pots or something like that or whatever, do you have something like that as a plan for us to look at? Thank you for your question. So, yes, uh, Malays, Indians, uh, they have come forward. So, the next question uh, everyone would ask, is it halal? Yeah, so it's not halal, but it's pork-free, lark-free. For our own uh, operations that uh, we run as uh, Yishun Health, we, we do make it halal because we can. But most others, we will tell them that it is pork-free, lark-free. And if a group insists that it is halal, then the question that I would pose to them, can you help me? So um, we have many uh, Malay ladies. I have actually uh, spoken to them and I have asked them, but this is a Chinese soup. How do you find it? And they say, um, uh, what's the word again? Um, uh, it's just a sedap uh, juga. Sedap juga. Wow. So that was really a, a good feedback to us, uh, Indians as well. And we have also asked them for their Malay and Indian recipes because every culture has a high protein, a high calcium equivalent. And uh, if there is just a need to enrich it, then we will ask our dietitians, how can we do that with them? Yeah. So we don't take away from them, but we give them back something that is better and then they can share it with others. So it is a, it's, a, it's a community helping community project. It's not about us anymore. Yeah, so that I, I hope will reassure you. Uh, when I went to the UK uh, in 2018, um, I shared this project with them and uh, a small group uh, in Wiltshire said, do you mind if we just use your idea? So I said, well, of course you can. In fact, the toolkit is online. You can just pull it and use it. And when I visited them again in 2019, one year later, they said, it's done. We are doing it. And they are using their own soups. Yeah, so they just stuck to the, um, to the idea that it must be high protein and high calcium combined with exercise. So I was very gratified for that sharing. So I think it can even be... Um, modified wherever people eat and wherever people move. So I think it will be uh, agnostic to culture. Yeah. Uh, then if you're asking me, uh, um, is there anything that um, could help us? Oh, certainly. <laughs> um, uh, we have started buying uh, the thermal flask, but we think that if we need to um, restart all 32 sites, we will need uh, 2,000 of those flasks to just to get everybody quickly going up um, and to get the um, um, subscription for them to do online registration, uh, to get some training courses for the, for the volunteers. Um, yeah, and uh, even to um, bring in uh, exercise um, equipment like you see those uh, therabands, uh, just to buy a strip for everyone. Um, it's a simple thing. Um, we don't always need to bring in exercise equipment, so we do uh, DIY. So for weights, we fill water bottles with water or with sand, or we use tin cans, uh, tin food, yeah? Uh, so we can improvise. So most of the community really improvise because they see the value, yeah, of that. So those would be, I would think, the immediate things that I we, we can immediately do, yeah. So we, we're n we've now uh, started with 350 of those thermal pots. Uh, so we will have some way to go. And uh, thank you for the offer, actually, uh, because if you ask the question, I can see the offer behind it. I'm, I'm very grateful. Yes. yes. Thank you, Dr. Thank Wong. You. Uh, we have the next question, Dr. Wong, which is actually flowing through from what you said about online registration and yes. etc. right? Mm. So th the question from uh, Rotarian uh, Vinit Ayanger is basically, 
about how tech savvy are the seniors and whether they are able to really engage online and is there a possibility for the Rotary Club to do more than just helping to cook the, the dishes or to uh, donate the thermos flask, but can we do something with digital enablement? Yeah, uh, certainly um, the digital digital enablement, um, I think it's not the issue. It's the hosting of the data. Um, so hosting is the by far the most uh, expensive long range um, um, payment that we need to maintain the um, the 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 what do you call that the software or, or the data mainly yeah I think that's the longer range thing. So for the um, uh, how tech savvy are they? They are not as bad as we think. <laughs> Yeah, and um, I have seen the school children teaching them and they were so patient with them that after one session, I can see suddenly a lot of videos being uploaded. I see a lot of um, people checking their blood pressures and sharing with their small groups. We saw a lot of WhatsApp groups starting up uh, we saw a lot of people knowing how to do Zooms now, like Zoom exercise is not a problem for a lot of them. Um, and uh, a lot of the Zoom exercises are really running on 50 to, 50 to 70 people at any one time. It's not as bad as we think. And so uh, there are ways to overcome some of those who are slower. They join in with another person. So it's not just about being savvy and therefore only if you're savvy, you can join. You just need friends, essentially. Yeah. Um, but certainly, I think uh, we are definitely open to anyone who uh, would like to help Um I'm not the most savvy person. Uh, I, I, I think uh, that would be helpful. Uh, and I think translating, uh, the translating is not an issue. So the same program, but translated into Chinese, um, especially the Chinese, so that they can actually register in Chinese. But the data comes in, um, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, perhaps one last question, please. Anyone? Maybe one of our budding uh, professional, uh, medical professional or senior medical professionals in our club. Can I ask a question? Yes, uh, please. Uh, what is the cost of one of these uh, flasks uh, that you're using? Uh, you said you wanted around 2,000 some of Rotarians can chip in and buy a few for you. Uh, I'm sure there'd be quite a few willing to support it. So what would be the average cost of something? Like okay, um, the, the average cost will be about $8.90. $8 um, so we've actually sourced for uh, uh, multiple models. But this particular model that you saw in the video, was chosen by the seniors themselves. And the reason why they chose that was that little handle, they could twist it on their own easily. Uh, the ergonomic size of that uh, container was just right for their grip. So we basically uh, got a few models in and got them to test it out and voted for it. So um, then uh, I think there's some additional cost for printing the logo on it so that they know that um, this is something that um, uh, comes on a weekly basis, at least, uh, that comes to you from your neighbour. So we do put a little bit of uh, extra cost just to print that logo on it. Yep. Mm. Okay. So with that, I think, uh, Dr. Rutherian, Utam, you got further questions for this? No, I'm fine. Thank You're you. Fine. All right, so that gives me great pleasure now to once again thank Dr. Wong for joining us this evening and sharing with us this very important uh, project that she has undertaken over so many years. And we hope that uh, we can do more with them and to serve you know, the needy, 
the frail and the old who are alone. Perhaps we can join them in the dance and in the exercise. We may set up our own centers all over Singapore, that's being ambitious, but we can start with one at least. I'll be happy to help you all. Um, <laughs> and thank you for giving me the opportunity to share. Um, and thank you for the what, um, encouraging questions. Uh, so I will take my leave now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Okay. Let's bye -bye. unmute ourselves to give Dr. Wong a round of applause, please. Bye-bye. Thank you. So allow me to now talk about uh, what's going to happen next week. And next week, we will have our next speaker. Now, we have external speakers, but it's also important to be rooted in what we do as Rotarians. And so we will, for the next two weeks, invite our fellow Rotarians from the district to come and address us about what the Rotary and the Rotary Action Plan would be. So next week, our guest speaker will be PDG Haji Andre Suharto from the Rotary Club of Kuching Central. He has visited our club many times and many of our Rotarians know him very well. So please do come and join us next week. And it gives me great pleasure to now tell you that we have come to the end of our meeting for this evening. We thank you all for your participation and we thank you for joining us in all the other subcommittees and the projects. But one last thing that I have to uh, announce, a happy thing is that the first project under YSE has been executed. Uh, so just a very short one before we end. Mukun, please uh, quickly uh, share with us. Oh, sure. Uh, thank you, President. Uh, uh, that was a very wonderful event what we had it. I'm just opening my slide. While uh, Director Mukun yeah. is uh, opening his slide, I'll just say that we finished the ILTC last weekend, three days, and uh, it was fantastic. And today we had uh, Ho Chong Institution's installation. It was also fantastic. And uh, one of the key takeaway for me this afternoon was uh, the former president of Ho Chong Institution, Ms. Heng Yi Shin. She was president 2013 to 2014. And she wanted to become a vet, you know, but uh, eventually because of her involvement with Interact Club, she decided to become a social worker. So this is a powerful endorsement of what Rotary can do to change lives. Mukun, please. All right. Um... President, I've uh, invited her also for the next meeting as a speaker. I've sent her the mail. I got the email address. And uh, going with the things, is, uh, we had the first camp uh, executed very well with the National Youth Council and everyone. We had around 163 interactors and rotractors and rotarians from District 3310 participated. Day one was ice grouping, ice breaking sessions, group dinner, lunch, team bonding, and leadership activities. What we have this is the gist of it. And these are some of the photos what we had on day one, actually. These are some of the Rotarians where we see that. And day two started with the Rotary information by, uh, started by uh, P. James, then with uh, our DG Dolly joined and followed by our President Lewis. And we had some of the information on some of the group sessions with the Rotarians advisors who joined our sessions. I have to thank them also. And next one was, this is one of the sessions what uh, uh, P. James did it. And some of the activities, what they've done on day two in the afternoon. These are some of the activities what they've been did. And uh, day three was um, then followed by the voluntary session in the morning, then followed by our public health ambassador, Dr. Stephen, talking about that. Then before, and our environment and sustainability director, Louis Ali, talking about it. And mental wellness project ascender by VP Ronald Wong. And this is the ICC election. We elected Chelin from Raffles Institution, who's won the elections. And that the project went good. This is the overall collage of it what we had it and um, I should thank most of the protractors and facilitators and other Rotarians here.
Thank you, President Lewis. Thank you, Director Mukun, for a job well done. So with that, I call a close to our meeting and see you next week. Thank you. Thank yeah. you.